أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وآله الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد um, Today will be our last lesson in uh, fasting and then uh, inshallah we will have a break for Ramadan al-Mubarak then after the holy month of Ramadan we will continue on with the next chapter of fiqh and that will be the chapter on khums and khums is indeed a, a khums is indeed a very complicated uh, topic so we will need to move our brain cells inshallah so uh, there are two things that i'm going to be discussing and that is uh, the first issue is the issue of sawm al musafir we've already we've already discovered dis discussed salat al musafir and we've said that any four rak'a prayer for sorry any four rak'a wajib prayer becomes two if you are traveling somewhere beyond that certain amount of distance that we said outside of the border of your city and you are going to be there for less than 10 days and your traveling is not a description of your work then and it's something that you don't frequently do on a daily basis then you will pray qasr and you will not be able to fast this it doesn't mean that you are exempted from fasting it means it is haram for you to fast it's not an option you can or you cannot fast no you are not allowed to fast okay so that's with um here with issue uh number one and now we've said We've had this discussion uh, a few weeks ago. If you travel before Zawal, there are certain laws. If you travel after Zawal, there are certain laws. If you travel before Zawal, yani if you go beyond the 24 kilometers, for example, then, and it's before Zawal, then you break your fast. If you travel after Zawal, if you travel after Salat al Dhuhr, then you don't break your fast for that day but let's say you're going to for example newcastle for three days you are leaving at 3 p.m on monday which obviously on monday you're going to be wake waking up fasting unfortunately something that a lot of people do is they say oh well i'm fasting today i'm gonna wake up not fasting i'm gonna try i'm traveling today I'm going to wake up not fasting. No, that's very wrong, right? That's haram, of course. That means you are intentionally breaking your fast. It means you're going to have to pay a kafara as well, right? So what you need to do is if you plan to travel on Monday, you fast for Monday. If you plan to travel before Zawal, and you go get to the boundary at, uh, exceeding the, that boundary of 24 k's and more then, then that's when you can break your fast if you are traveling after zawal then you stay fasting that day and you only break your fast at maghrib how about tuesday and wednesday because we said you're going to be in newcastle for only three days tuesday and wednesday tuesday you can't fast wednesday you you can choose to either fast or not fast but if you know that you're going to be back in sydney before zawal we said you wake up in the morning with the niyyah with the intention of imsak not with the intention of fasting so on wednesday you wake up you know that you're going to be back in sydney before zawal what do you do you say I am going to be back in um, Sydney before Zawal. Your niya, your intention is going to be that you do imsak, you refrain from anything that invalidates your fast, you arrive back in Sydney, 
you do your intention for fasting of Shahr Ramadan on that day, your fasting will be valid. You can break your fast or you can eat or drink if you want to. But if you know that you won't be able to be, you won't be back in Sydney until before Zawal, the only time you will be back in Sydney is after Zawal, then you will also be breaking your fast on Wednesday. And for someone who is traveling and they are going to be somewhere for less than 10 days, they cannot fast. Now, what happens if you are a person who is CBB? You don't have any khilat, you are way o over it, you know, you hate the world, you hate everyone, you even hate your neighbor's cats, you don't want to fast. Are you allowed to travel Newcastle, Brisbane, Adelaide, Perth, Cairns, this, that, during Ramadan and Mubarak intentionally for the purpose of avoiding fasting that's a negative example a positive example in a place in Canada one of my friends Sheikh was telling me that they they fast for 19 to 20 hours I've tried that in um, New Zealand 19 18 19 hours in summer as well right? You've got some issues, you're not that strong, you're very young, you just reached the age of taklif, right? Are you allowed to travel somewhere to avoid the fasting? From a fiqhi perspective, the answer is yes. Even though you are going to deprive yourself from the most spiritual month of the year and ultimately one of the things that is said from a fiqhi perspective is it is makruh it is makruh for you to travel during the month of Ramadan unless there's a greater purpose okay this is an important question that uh, important issue that we need to discuss. I am going to stay away from complicating things because unfortunately one of the biggest problems that we have, I will even say a big fitna that we have in our community is the war and the battle that occurs when the holy month of Ramadan starts or finishes and believe me trust me when I say this to you sisters this is from shaitan shaitan loves and thrives on fitna and discord and breaking our community with things that are irrelevant that are insignificant that have absolutely no value Nabiullah Musa alayhi salam he put so much effort until Bani Israel accepted to walk with him to the sea. He opened the sea. Yani, what else could they want as a sign of him being a man of God? They opened the sea. He opened the sea for them. From one side of the ocean to the other side of the ocean, when they got to the other side of the ocean, they started missing their cow and fighting over a cow and seeing all this that's why Surah Al-Baqarah why is it called Surah Al-Baqarah the largest Surah in the Quran called Surah Al-Baqarah Baqarah means cow let's drill it in our minds right oh you do Tomorrow is Ramadan for you. No, it's not Ramadan. Why are we doing this? What about my what about my son, my daughter, my husband, my wife? Why does she have to fast and I don't fast? Why don't our ulama sit down together and finalize this and 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 come up with a conclusion? What's all this dis disunity that's happening in in the community? All these other things that people throw around all the time. Ya akhi, what's wrong? 
It's a fiqhi issue like any other issue. When was the last time you had a fight with your husband, with your wife, with your son, with your parent, with your neighbor over your fourth rak'ah, whether you should recite subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah once or three times or whether you should do the fatiha. It's a fiqhi issue. And for each fiqhi issue, every mukallaf refers back to their marja' taqlid. And they listen to what their marja' taqlid says. It is a fiqhi issue establishing the beginning of the month of Ramadan or any lunar month is a fiqhi issue exactly the same as any other fiqhi issue. Why can't people understand this? I don't know. Yani my um, ability to express this in the most subtle way, in the calmest way, in the most polite way, and still some people, they are adamant in trying to stir this into a problem, to bring disunity and say inappropriate things. Where are, where are our maraja? Why don't they be up to date with all of these things? People have reached the moon and our maraja are still picking over this and that. Be careful what we need to be careful what we say. Astronomy isn't a new science. Astronomy has existed for thousands of years. Astronomy. So for you to come and say, oh, you know what, let's do our calculation because we, we can know the calculation. No. That's not how it works. We have so many ahadith from Ahlul Bayt alayhim wasalam that say there's calculation, there's this, there's that, there's this, but you need to see it with your eye, right? It's exactly like you saying, I can throw myself in the water 20 times and I, it can be distilled water with um, using Detol, detol, detol wipes and I can come out and I'll be as clean as a surgeon's hand. Can you do, would that be sufficient for ghusl or for wudu? No. Wudu has its own process. Ghusl has its own process. And any other example that we give. So, Moon sighting, moon sighting is not, is not a means for an objective. No, that in itself is an objective. That in itself is what we do as a part of the whole process of establishing the beginning of a lunar month. So, my brotherly advice to you all is please... Please do not get entangled with this argument. Do not be distracted by shaitan. Sit back and wait until you reach the information reaches you from a reliable source. If the real source is reliable. If you didn't see it, if you didn't go out and do istihlal, it's mustahab by the way, it's mustahab for you to go out and look for the moon. If you didn't see it yourself, you wait for a reliable source. Say, Sayyid Hashim Nasrullah, for example, Sayyidina al Karim, what's happening? What do we do? Wait for the information. Sheikh Zaid, no, he's not reliable. Another person, what do we do? Shall we celebrate Eid tomorrow or is tomorrow the 30th of Ramadan? That's it. No need for arguing or this and that and oh your marja' taqlid is, says this and my marja' taqlid says that. No, each person follows the marja' taqlid like this is similar to any other case, right? Anyway, lunar month in any of the months is established by these Five ways. Number one, you the mukallaf seeing it yourself. Number two, two adil, just, righteous, pure, pious people 
see it. Number three, everyone in the town says tomorrow is Ramadan. Number four, Sha'ban, 30 days from Sha'ban is passed because a lunar month can only be either 29 or 30. A lunar month can only be either 29 or 30. And the last one is Hakim uh, al Islamic authority. For example, a marja taqlid says in this city, it's Ramadan. That would be enough. Okay? Now, we have two issues that we need to discuss. One issue is the view of some maraja represented in the marja'iyah, for example, of Sayyid Sistani. Sorry, Sayyid al -Khu'i. Sorry about that. Represented in the marja'iyah of Sayyid al -Khu'i. The other is what most of our contemporary ulama believe. And that is that Sayyid al -Khu'i says, Sayyid al -Khu'i, the great marja, Sayyid al -Khu'i, rahimahullah, he says that if in one part of the world the moon was sighted then anywhere else in the world that has the same night that has the same night even if it's for 15 minutes they share the same night then they can also consider that to be beginning of Ramadan so like for example it was seen in Tehran or in Beirut for us here in Australia, tomorrow is Ramadan, right? The other view is, no, you need to be in the same horizon for you to be able to follow the witnessing or the seeing of the moon. For example, Sayyid Sistani says this, Sayyid Khamenei says this. For example, Melbourne. Sydney, Brisbane, Cairns, Cairns is at the top of, of uh, Queensland, isn't it? All of this, right, is one ufuk, right? So, with ta'addud al-afaq, with multiple horizons, each ufuk, each horizon has its own witnessing of the moon. That's issue, first issue. Second issue is there is a difference of view between those who say you can only and only see it with your naked eye, maybe with glasses, maybe, but you can't use a telescope or binocular or anything else. That's the view of Sayyid Khu'i, that's the view of Sayyid Sistani. Another view, and that's the view of Sheikh Fadl al Karani, Marhum, Great Marja. Father Linkarani, also the view of Sayyid al Khamenei. You can use a telescope or a binocular. You can have, you can see the moon through assistance of an instrument. Right? So, therefore, let's say, for example, someone says that I saw the moon. You need to ask, how did you see the moon? If you are a follower of Sayyid al-Khamenei, you don't need to ask that question. Because whether he saw the moon with the naked eye or through a telescope, for you, tomorrow is Ramadan. But for, for, a, follower of Marhum, uh, for, for a follower of Marhum Sayyid al-Khu'i or for a follower of Sayyid al-Sistani, you need to ask, how did you see the moon? Was it with the naked eye or did you see it with a telescope? Right? This is a, an example. This is an example of what you would usually see uh, in the moon sighting pages. Green is perfect visibility. Right? Light blue is not so good visibility 
and only if the weather is very very good right gray with assistance of a telescope you could be able to see it right and red you will certainly need to have optical assistance the aid of a telescope black is impossible right black is this here the new moon right new moon is black because in the new moon the moon has gone away it's in the meridian that there's no more it's in the mahak as they say you can't see it it go it disappears for a certain period of time that's and that's why the new cycle begins with the new moon which for example here was on june the 5th 2016 for example right and this time universal time and from then onwards it's going to take a while until visibility is seen right let's say they see it in perth will it be established in sydney if the crescent is seen in perth will we start ramadan tomorrow in sydney first of all it's it's different horizon second of all it will depend on issue of taqlid so for example with the uh, with sail khu'i yes tomorrow will be tomorrow will be ramadan for people of sydney but for others no because the moon is um traveling this way right the moon is traveling this way so if it's seen in the west it doesn't necessarily need, mean that it will be seen in the east but if it's seen in the east then it will certainly be established in the west so if we see it in sydney then most certainly it's going to be established anywhere and everywhere west of sydney adelaide and perth alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidina muhammad wa alihi tahirin اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد